One of the most common questions I see on the CSGO subreddit is asking how to transfer success from deathmatch to competitive. And it always has the most common answer. You just gotta be calm and you'll reach success. I followed this for a while and spent endless hours with the deagle trying to calm down before competitive. And it didn't help. I don't want people to waste the same amount of time I did when I tried to transfer my skill. Because I believe there are different reasons why we can aim so well in deathmatch but never can in matchmaking. I think first it has to do with when we see people. I've never really thought about it, but it gets frustrating when you never get to see the person who's about to kill you. Though I've never noticed me doing this to others. Am I just unlucky? Not really. I tracked 100 engagements in a deathmatch server, sorry for the small sample size, and labeled one as unfair if one person wasn't looking at the other person when killing them. I was a bit lenient when rating something as a fair fight, and I guess it would be unfair if someone saw the other person before the other person saw them, but I don't really need to try and bend the facts to help me. There are plenty of others already doing that. I found out that 35 out of 100 engagements for me had me being killed when I was looking away, or vice versa. To me, that's pretty significant. One out of every three fights, someone isn't even looking at the other person. It's a bit of a small sample size, so I'd like you to do this for yourself. It takes like 5 minutes, but keep a notepad or else it'll be hard to keep track. So why does this matter? Well, like I said earlier, I never really notice when I get the advantage. And I guess in the past, I would think to myself that against all of these fair fights, I would still win a fair bit of the time. Against people who are better than me. But in reality, timing was just on my side. Next is with movements. If you go into a map like aim underscore bots and get into the groove of the map, you'll feel like scream, one tapping a bunch of noobs, join a deathmatch server right after, or just make the bots move, and you'll feel like you can't aim at the same level, unless you're scream. For most people, it's easier to aim on stood still targets. Shocker, I know. And in deathmatch, when people are fighting someone else, chances are they're committed to that fight and are stood still for you to snipe them. It allows for these quick, impressive looking frags that most of us can't seem to land in matchmaking, unlike the kings. It's a bit frustrating how most of the time, it seems you just lost your aim once you get into a game. But in a game, people are constantly running towards you. And every chance you are away from someone, the closer they move to you. And when they finally do peek out, they'll move really fast on your screen if they're closer, because they'll take up a larger percentage of your FOV. Also a note is where people are. In deathmatch, most people are just running around, not caring where they are. They're put out in the open with no cover. Not because they don't know how to play, but because they just want to zone out and frag mostly. However, in a game, people are nestled in corners and often very timid when peeking. They like to go behind cover and make you go to them, not see each other and then instantly engage. Again, this is something I've never really noticed until I looked at the footage of deathmatch. Even though what's happening is right out in the open for us to see, like the player. In a game, you have to worry about grenades, the minimap, that toxic teammate, and the US deck crisis. You can't always focus on digging the enemy, because there's just so much more ticking up your brain power. In deathmatch, you just have to worry about clicking on their head most of the time, and most likely others are too. So yeah, I don't think it's just about being zen or whatever people say. Probably plays a factor since being calm is better than shaking all over the place, but then again, that's what my socks are for.